was just kind of running around this morning, getting stuff done. And then my husband came down and decided to make a smoothie. <laughs> and I was like, you have 30 seconds to, to blend that <laughs> because I need to start this. He's like, I can do that. <laughs> so he went back up. But anyway, I was just introducing you to everyone. Um, this is my dear friend, Stacy, And we have traveled together quite a bit to different events. Yeah. Um, throughout the years. Um, let's talk about how we met. Sure. Um, I think we met at a stocking at zombies, um, retreat way back when really I think so too. A, a lot of years ago. Yeah. Do you, do you, was it the year that I met Amber? Do you think? I mean, it must've been, I don't think it was any time before that. Did we meet on the first one? I really don't remember. It's been a, a really long time. Um, it might have been at the first one. There were so many new people there. Like when that was kind of one of my first retreats. And For so sure. there are so many new faces there. Um, that was when it was in that little room, right? Yeah, we were at um, the that Kaler? older hotel. The Kaler. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like so dark in there. And yeah, but it was fun. And yeah. Yeah, it was a smaller event even, mm -hmm. but I don't, yeah. yeah, so it would have been that long ago. How did you find out about that? Did you watch their podcast? That um, I did watch their podcast and I feel like, I feel like I started watching their podcast after I attended maybe the first Super Summer Knit Together. Okay. Um, yeah. By here in Nashville where I live. And I think maybe I met... Megan them there yeah yeah, yeah. They, and, I think they went um, yep yeah she stayed I think a little bit um off the beaten track and I offered to drive her back to their place because they weren't at Scarrett <sighs> Bennett and it was a really long time ago and then they started their podcast and then I watched that both of them all the time um I had smaller kids then and um yeah I think and then I was like oh hey I met all these people and then I met Mary Gale of um, Spartacus oh. Die. We had her own video podcast um, called Something Something. Anyway, um, that was an oldie but a goodie. But she also lived in the Nashville area. And I met her in person at a fiber That's festival right. that was in, um, in my town, run by several different friends of mine that I'd met in my local knit group. Yeah. Um, Rest in peace, my knit group. Um, but yeah, no, it was a really long time ago. And I I met Mary Gale and then we sort of kept in touch a little bit. And then she and I didn't even really know each other very well. Um, and we decided we were going to go to the Stockin' at Zombies retreat. And uh, yeah, we drove from Nashville all the way up to Rochester, Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, so we got wow. to know each other pretty well on like a 15-hour car drive. Yeah. And that's kind of what happened with Renee and I, she joined yeah. my knitting group. And then I said, Hey, do you want to go to this event? And she was like, and she wasn't like a knitter with a capital K at the time. Like she knew how to knit, but she wasn't knitting like she knits today. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah. So we kind of got in the car and drove down and yeah. um, my gosh. And then she got sick. Oh, she got she? really sick and she went home like oh and I drove yeah oh my gosh I'll have to talk to her about that um that's a yeah. memory from a long time ago yeah guys I think she got food poisoning she went oh, home no. and then came back like a day mm -hmm. later like on the last morning or something just to she yeah she was so uncomfortable wow memories yeah. <laughs> so yeah since then We've been to Stitches Midwest, Shepherd's right? Harvest, um, and Stitches Midwest, and we've yep. been to Rhinebeck a couple of times. Yep. Yeah. And um, did you go to January Thaw? No, I no. never did. Um, because the weather is so iffy, and I would definitely have to fly. Um, that was just not something I was. <laughs> yeah, willing that to take one the year risk. we shouldn't have gone either. <laughs> yeah, because the blizzard was so bad. It took us 
hours and hours and hours to get home. It was, yeah, that it was, was scary. My how- big concern. It's been a minute since I lived um, where it snows a lot. So um, <laughs> I was not confident in one driving by myself all the way up there. And then um, flying was nerve wracking also. Yeah. And she's moved it now from January to November. Has, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> it's a different, completely different time of year. Yeah. So Stacy is also a test and sample knitter extraordinaire. So you do a, you do a lot of sample knitting for different people. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Just like sure. how you um, got hooked up is- with that? Yeah, it's less now, um, but it was, I was very prolific um, a while ago. Um, I worked for Craftsy that turned into Blueprint that sort of went, has gone now back to Craftsy. Um, But early, early on, Corey and I have a mutual friend, Annette, and she got me hooked up with some people who needed samples made. And so um, I've also knit for nitpicks. So if you're thumbing through their catalog every now and again, you can see some things that I've knit. Um, and then for Craftsy, I knit a lot. Um, the Grocery Girls had a little show on Craftsy, and I knit several of their samples that they showed. Um, I also knit several samples as step outs for different designers through that. And then um, there's a pretty famous designer named Corey Eichelberger that I've also knit for um, yeah. several times. And um, yeah, it's fun. Um, I get paid by the yard. When I do knit, I also do commissions and I love a good um, story, a, l- a little bit of history. So if you had a Mima or a grandma or a boopy or a lolly who used to knit stockings and is now no longer allowed to, to knit stockings or here to knit stockings, um, I am your girl. <laughs> so um, the most stockings I ever knit in a season was 10. Um, which is a lot of Christmas stockings. Um, So I have a variety of Christmas stockings um, patterns that I have available to me because different people have requested different ones. And a lot of them are the old, old, old ones that you used to be able to find in Kmart's as like a whole package um, with all the yarn you needed and everything. So yeah. You've done a lot of those, kind of with the Santa with the Angora beard. Yes. Or the, Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes they're knit flat. You know, they were all of them are knit flat. There's a lot of intarsia involved. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So people have kind of gotten in touch with you over the years. Mm -hmm. Um, for I've sent a couple people your way because people are looking for matching for the rest of the family and they take, they go into a yarn store and they're like, Hey, you know, how can I find you know, is there anybody would have this? So you've done a lot of those. My friend Rosemary yes. that I t- I've talked about a lot, she's done a lot of those too. She used to do them all the time. And and it's it's a lot of small work, like mm-hmm. uh, small yarn, small needles, intarsia. <laughs> yeah. So it's lots and lots that, and lots of ends. But that everyone would want to do for sure. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you said something and I was gonna, what was it? When you're talking about sample knitting. Yes, I've had Stacy sample knit quite a bit. Um, oh, you're really fast. So you and Annette are both um, product, can be a product knitter, right? Like get started, get it done, move through it, right? Like there's no dawdling around when you're a sample knitter. You kind of have to, bang it deadline. Out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for yep. sure. And I love the process of knitting. Um, I find it really enjoyable. I do it in movies. Um, I do it when I'm sitting and watching TV or watching movie. I love it. And I live in Tennessee. It doesn't get very cold here. Um, so I am happy to knit a sweater and then pass it along, um, to someone who's actually going to use it. So while I pump out the products, I'm more of a process knitter. I like the process and the product is fun sometimes, but I don't always need to keep the product. Yeah. So I'll just bring up a, a contest from your past that you had with Megan, where you knit the Even Star shawl. We did. You yeah. guys decided. Was that um, Olympic knitting? It was Olympic knitting. Yes. And it was still called the Rav Olympics then. (laughs) Now it's called the Rav Olympics. Uh, But yeah, it was the Rav Olympics then. Mm -hmm. So that is a lace weight beaded 
Beaded. Yep. Beaded. Um, circular. Yep. Shawl. <laughs> yep. I'll try to find a picture. Um, and yeah. the two of you decided to see how quickly you could knit it. And it, did. it was thousands of yards, I'm assuming. Thousands of, well, maybe not thousands of yards, but thousands of stitches for sure. Oh, um, yeah. Maybe a thousand beads. So you start with, I think, probably four or six stitches in the center, and then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and bigger. And then you have all of your stitches live on the edge, and then you knit the edge perpendicular to your knitting. And, and yeah. you beat it as you go. Yep. Yeah. And for whatever reason, I decided to knit it in cream um, because I am, I, I love lace knitting. So um, well. <laughs> but then I decided to dye it. Um, and so I sort of tried to do a gradient dye. And then again, because I really, not that I couldn't care less about the product, but it's just something I did and then I'm done with it. I get, gave it to Amber um, to wear as a church shawl whenever she wants. So yeah, passed it along. That is ZK yes. actually. Yeah. yeah, Amber did come into our lives um, at some point. I don't know if yeah. it, when it was that first year that she came, but I assume um, that's what I remember is that she was telling the story at her table late at night of remodeling her the house that she lives in now with Rick and how they spent all day working and all night remodeling and getting very little sleep. And she had the table roaring with laughter, like the stories that she was telling. And we stayed up until one or two in the morning and there were very few people left by that point. And, you know, and she was telling that story. And that's the night that I remember meeting her and then eventually the next day exchanging information or whatever. But um, so you and Megan knit that shawl in how many days? Um, I think we were both less than 10 days. Yeah. Yeah. It was Did a you lot sleep? of knitting. Yeah, of course. I have never been someone who can stay up all night ever. I've never done that my whole life. Um, so yeah, I slept. Um, I feel like the Olympics though were in somewhere far away. And so to watch the live things, you did stay up late. Um, okay. Yeah. But I don't know. I'd have to go back and look. It's been a long yeah. time. Yeah, I, I think that you guys knit them, you know, just in like a little over a week, these giant masterpieces, literally, of of the design, right? Like she yeah. she designed that shawl and a lot of people knit it, took it on, but a lot of people didn't finish. It it was such yeah. a big piece. And it you is. know, yeah, it it was very, very popular at the time. Susan Ashcroft, right? Um, I don't think that's her name, but her first name is Susan. I feel like it starts okay. with a P. Okay. I don't know. I'll put it, I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. I don't know how. But I, she was this, at, she was at a ZK. I think she maybe used to live in Indiana. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, But yeah, she was a prolific designer for a while. I knit several of her, of her patterns. She had a really pretty cowl. Yeah, and I think even yeah. star is from some kind of is a, from a book, maybe. A it's one word, right? Something. I'm just going to look it up quick. Yeah. Yeah. It's just one oh, word. Susan Pandorf. Wrong person. Pandorf. You're right. Yep. OK, so this will be good there. Oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> that is what they did. That's get. the one. In 10 days now. And it's um, easily I mean, it was easily five, six feet across. It was giant. 20. Um, yeah. Here's a cream one just to get an idea. Yeah. Not yours, but um, yeah, it, it was. Oh my gosh. <laughs> someone is probably using that as a veil that it looked Absolutely. like yeah. someone was being Absolutely. a ghost, but it's actually someone probably using yeah, it. It that would be beautiful as a veil. That gives a good um, representation of how big it is. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's definitely, it was a ton of knitting. Here's just a, a, a pretty one. I got a little glare, but I think people get yeah, the idea. Yeah, I used it as a tablecloth for a little while. I have my um, great-grandparents' dining room table. And for a little while, um, it's, you know, it's got all the leaves, so it can be a circle or it can be really long. And at the time it was just a circle. So I used it as a tablecloth for a little while. 
Yeah. That's what I did with my pie shawl. Um, mm -hmm. Is that I, I put it on the, the table for a while and it got snagged once and then there's oh. a safety pin in it and it's fine. Like I'm not going to wear it. It's round. I wanted to knit a pie shawl, but yeah, a round shawl is hard to wear because you really do almost have to fold it in order to, uh, yeah. to wear it. And then it kind of takes away from the, the beauty yeah. when there it's folded because mm -hmm. you don't see the pretty as much. Right. So yeah, it could definitely, yeah. I think you're almost better off doing a half. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, send, um, Stacy was really organized and sent me her list of her favorite knits of all time ahead of time with links, which was lovely because she knows I struggle with links sometimes. Just taking the time to make links in all of my show notes, which I do. And if if one of her, or two of you would visit those every now and then, it would make it worthwhile because I'm not sure how many people actually go out. But I did have um, my friend Suzanne last time. She goes, you linked these already. I was like, yes, yes, I did. So um, that was kind of fun. So the first one that is on your list here is the Star Pillow by yes. Michelle Wilcox. Oh, my gosh. Look at how cute that is. I didn't so, look these up uh, ahead of time. Yeah. So um, when my boy, I have two boys. Um, they're young adults now, but when they were very little... We had gotten a Wii for Christmas, a Nintendo Wii, and there is a game where Mario goes through and catches star bits, and we have a perfect tiny little lap in our house through the kitchen, through the living room, and they would run in circles, and they would grab imaginary star bits, and they would fight over the imaginary star bits, and Easter was coming up, and I thought... I found the perfect pattern for them, so I knit them both, and so it's got little eyes for the Mario star... Because Mario stars have little eyes. So I knit them each star pillows. And I wasn't keeping it a secret. Um, I would sit and knit. And so it's, I don't know if you can tell, there are 10 diamonds that you knit. And then you sew them all together and make stars. And they saw me knitting the stars. Or they saw me knitting the, the diamond shape here. And then on Easter, they got them. And they got a pair of Mario pajamas. And they said, mom, mom, the Easter bunny knows how to knit. And I was so upset that the Easter bunny took all of my thunder. Um, but they love them so much. And um, they wore their brand new Super Mario Brothers pajamas underneath their Easter clothes to church. It was adorable. So this is well loved. You can probably see all of the pilling. Um, because they slept with them, they carried them around, they've been all over the place. That is that is so cute. What a cute baby gift, too. Like yeah, for sure. For a shower or something to make a little yeah. pillow. That's really cute. Oh, I yeah. had no idea because I didn't look these yeah. up ahead of time. <clears throat> I just printed it out. <laughs> so that's that and I love the story behind it. Like yeah. that's that's a really neat memory to have. I don't like to knit toys, but on Kylie's bed upstairs, there are probably six or seven stuffies that I knit throughout the years. And she would see something and I would say, I, you know, I don't want to knit <laughs> all of that, but I was really glad I did now. Right. In oh. retrospect, like she carried them. She has, the, they're on her bed upstairs in her bedroom yeah. someday, you know, she'll probably have children and then they can have them or whatever when they come to grandma's house or whatever. But I got to get her married first. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're too busy to have children. They're so running around. Um, okay. Two, Francis the Sock Wearing Fox. Oh, this is by Jenna Krupar. She had a podcast. So, yeah. Um, so this is not a fox. As you can see, I have a fox. It's actually still downstairs in our toy room, even though, like I said, my boys are young adults now. Um, but my husband a very long time ago just made the offhanded comment that when he was a kid his favorite animal was raccoons um so I knit a raccoon instead of a fox and I'm pretty sure the modification is somewhere in one of the many many um yeah projects on Ravelry so he's got a cute little striped tail and then um oh what was that movie called Marvel Guardians of the Galaxy came out and yep. there is a cartoon, a character named Rocket Raccoon, and 
my kids thought he was hilarious. And so I looked at the pattern for Francis, the sock wearing fox and made just the body and made a little tiny sweater for the raccoon. So he looked like rocket raccoon. So that was a couple of years after I made the raccoon. Oh, that's so he's darling. Cute. It's yeah. so cute. And I'm sure I got the nose and the eyes on Etsy. I may have linked it in my project page, but that's very doubtful. I'm not very good at keeping up on those. Um, but yeah, he's just a cute, another little fun stuffy guy. And, you know, when you have little kids, a big project is sometimes daunting. But here or there, I can knit a few few stitches, few rounds on a body, a couple of ears, a couple of legs. So the smaller projects were what I was into when they were little. Okay. So you need to like make that for Amber and then put, he's got to be holding a little sign that says, do not pet me. <laughs> it should. Or do I not think... try to save the dog because she had the terrible, I'm laughing, Awful. but she would laugh now too, but the terrible now. raccoon attack in her backyard terrible. that yes. took, you know, tried to kill one of her little dogs and she just reached in and got, oh, the whole, she had to do the shots and the whole thing. So, but she's yeah. always, always trying to pet wild she animals. Wants, yes, because Instagram and social media make raccoons look so lovable and so cute and they are not uh, they're cute, but they are not necessarily lovable. No, right. Uh, and when they're in attack mode. To, what is she trying to befriend now? A groundhog or something? A groundhog, I think. Yeah. Yeah. There's one that lives near the her workplace or something. And yes. she sees it all the time. So she gets out and talks I to it. I think it lives by RJ's mailbox. Something. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. <laughs> because she bought a a framed print of a raccoon at shepherd's harvest yeah, it it wasn't a print it was a it was 3d up. felted yeah, yeah. yeah i have a raccoon. picture of her being like look and i was like yeah. you cannot have a relationship with this wild animal yes for sure for yeah, sure she would invite them in the house if she could <laughs> if she could yes okay uh number three some assembly required by amber allison Okay, you'll be shocked to see it is another toy. Um, this is the most technically advanced thing I've ever knit. Um, his little hands are just like the Lego hands. They're curved um, and you knit them completely separately from the body. And I'm in the shock. head comes off and you knit a hole for the head and the top comes off which is why it says some assembly required. So you knit the little pegs, you knit the little holes, um, and then you can put it all together. And um, I made these for my kids for Christmas one year. Whoops, they have been loved, so they don't necessarily stay together. When I found them, I found the arms separate from the bodies. Um, inside are just um, safety eyes, and you put that together as you're knitting it. So then the arms can also sort of move a oh little my bit. Gosh. Um, yeah, it was a really, really fun knit. But like I said, um, at the time and probably still today because of the way it's constructed and the little hands, um, the head is knit um, this way instead of yeah, this way. I can see. Um, but yeah, it was um, really techni technical, um, but super fun. And watching it come together was just really really cool and at every step I was like oh my gosh and I scream out to my husband you've got to come look at this so it was fun for sure um does she do other technical patterns you know like I don't know and I don't even remember how I came across this pattern um I'd have to look that up I'm not sure but there are but so it was many really, people into really Lego it. Yeah. right I'm mm -hmm. gonna look and see um Oh, it says no. Did I spell it wrong? You know, Ravelry can be so A finicky. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll look it up later, but that's, that's incredible. <laughs> I'm just yeah, shocked. It was I'm a like... fun one. Yeah. Okay. Then we have Hilled by Bente Presterud. Yeah. I think that's how you would say it. 
a sweater. So you'll you'll recognize this as a sweater that I oh. um <laughs> I do. was knitting I... um until four o'clock in the morning so I could get it done before we went to Rhinebeck. So this is the oh sleeve. Gosh. Don't look too closely up here because I got off pattern, but at that point I didn't care. I was just trying to get it done. So this is my sweater. And then the back is all the same pattern. Mind blown. This was glorious. It was so it was pretty. I love so, it so much. So pretty. So pretty. Yeah. And we were um, staying together and you were like, I'm wearing this tomorrow. And I would think that you don't have an opportunity to wear it that much in Tennessee because it would be I so warm. We had seven days of super cold weather this winter and that was it. And I, you can see my glasses have fogged up. I run hot all the time. Um, so I just really don't have an opportunity to wear it very often. Yeah. And was it cold that year at Rhinebeck? Probably not. <laughs> Usually when I either have knit a super heavily cabled sweater or um, basically, you know, a feral sweater that's like basically two layers right between with the floats. Um, it's usually fairly warm. I don't think yeah. I was uncomfortable, but um, I don't think it was very cold either. Yeah, I the only, I've been four times, I think. And the only one year was it cold in the morning. Um, mm -hmm. And that was maybe the first year I went and I put a poncho on over my sweater and then took it off later. But we had hats on and the Sunday morning, the snowflakes came down just a few, just a couple. Oh. And it was uh -huh. like magical, right? Cause it was very fall, but we just had a few early morning snowflakes. And I just remember standing there going, this is amazing. I'm at a yarn festival and you know, there's just these few yeah. little snowflakes and then it stopped. And, and that was the, the coldest otherwise it, it can be warm warm the one year mm -hmm. it was so warm I remember Matt took a sweater like off 70s. and wore a t-shirt <laughs> you know he yes. was like people are all well, in these big oversized or you know warm yes. sweaters yeah and that is a year where I wore my fox sweater um it was so hot but I was like dang it I worked hard on this sweater. <laughs> I'm wearing it no matter what but it was a warm day a warm yeah, day and so a wool you sweater. and I knit that foxy sweater. I think mm -hmm. you found it, and or I don't know. No, you what. found it, and then okay. you found it, and I think texted our little group chat, and immediately, immediately, I got online, ordered all the yarn, was there the next week, and started. Um, I remember knitting in the school drop-off line, the pickup <laughs> line. I knit it. We had to there. resize that sweater. I've told this story before, but it only yeah, came it was only in, in one extra size. small and small. And her her instructions were um to make a bigger size go up in yarn weight, right? Like mm -hmm. you just yep. have to go up in yarn weight. So we did have to do quite a few calculations to figure out how to make I think I yep. added an extra fox repeat and knit it in like worsted weight. But it was mm -hmm. not a, it, the pattern is glorious. It's so cute. Um, I'll put it on here. Um, but it, it is color work all over color work. What yarn did you make yours in? Do you remember? Uh, uh, it was a knit picks. It was probably their wool of the Andes. Maybe I knit it in the sport weight. Maybe I knit it in the worsted weight. I don't remember. Yeah. I, um, um but yeah, I knit mine in it was Sun a, Valley that I remember because yeah. mine's quite heavy because her worsted mm -hmm. is kind of a heavy worse it's a heavy mm -hmm. um here it is oh it's so cute it's so cute <laughs> so cute and then she also has um a pattern for mittens yes, so I knit match. my sister the mittens that match uh-huh the oh, same you fox did. with the stripes behind uh-huh um she has, has gotten tons of many mittens, mittens um my sister has received many mittens from me over the years. She lives in a cold here climate. Is, so. Here are yeah. the mittens that match the sweater, which is right below it. But yeah. So that is Natalia Morieva. And she has just, I've shown her before. So many. Tons and tons mm -hmm. of just mittens with all the different designs on them that you could ever want. Like 
anything you'd, you know, any that you would ever want on a mitten, she would, oh yeah, here, these are little foxes for little kids. Oh, those, those are, are so cute. So yeah, I remember that we did that one at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's got a, a website. Oh, this is so fun. This is like walking down memory lane. I know. Or, yeah. Okay. The Boho Style Mosaic Shawl by Irene Lynn. This was a craftsy or blueprint um, sample. And I wear this one a lot. I actually had to go get it from my car um, because I, I leave it in the car to have it with me. It's got cute little oh. tassel on the on the bottom to keep it weighted and so then here's your mosaic knitting pattern and then the middle is just um plain stockinette with a pearl yep row every so often and i'm not sure why but there's no you would think there might be a tassel in the middle but there oh. isn't it's just on each end but yeah, yeah it's really cute i um my kryptonite, the thing I am unable to do in knitting is make a tassel and make a pom-pom. Those two things completely elude me. I've watched every tutorial, um, used every tool, made my own pom-pom tool, bought the Susan Bates tool and everything. I'm just terrible at it. Absolutely terrible at it. Um, but these tassels actually turned out okay. So I'm really, really proud of these. Um, but yeah, I love this one. It's knitted... Um, probably it looks like maybe worsted weight or DK. Um, so it's a really weighty shawl and it's good if it's cooler that day. Um, I hate to wear a coat cause then I have to carry it once I get inside a store. Um, so the shawl is perfect. And like I said, yeah. I rescued it from my car because it's always, always in the car. Always. I have use. a couple of shawls with tassels on the end and my new design that's actually going to come out on this podcast that I'm having the photo shoot for this afternoon, huh? it, I put, there are three samples. And on one of the sample, I put tassels on the end. I sewed them on actually last night. So on the pink sample, I, I added uh, tassels because I really do like the weight of that mm. on the end of a shawl. It keeps every shawl in place so well that, you know, if you wear for it sure. in the front and wrap it around, mm -hmm. I love a good tassel on the end to, mm -hmm. to give it some weight or beads or, or balls, something. rhubarb balls. felted yeah. balls, <laughs> something to give something some weight. Um, yeah. That, I remember when you knit that one, cause it, it was, um, that mosaic where you're doing slip mm -hmm. stitches. If people don't know, mosaic knitting is not color work. Um, per se, mm -hmm. it looks like color work, but you're slipping stitches. So you're only ever working with one color in a row. Mm -hmm. Do you find, um, I haven't knit a ton of mosaic. I I have a couple things, but um, do you find that it's kind of like um, linen stitch where it takes longer for the rows to grow because you're slipping um, on a row? So you're almost doing two rows or no? So I will say um, when anyone says linen stitch, like I sort of have this anxious internal uh, feeling because the only time I've ever knit linen stitch, I knit with flax yarn and that was the bane of my existence. I hated every second of that project, um, but it was a market bag and it, it needed linen for what it was, but I hate it or flax yarn in linen stitch and I hated every second of it. Um, but um, again, I don't notice the time because it is getting from point A to point B for me. Um, I, I don't think so though, because it's just that the one, the one stitch is just a little elongated. So the other, all yeah. of the rest of the stitches stay the same. Yeah. I haven't ever heard anybody say that it just popped into my brain that when you're slipping stitches on a row, everything can kind of compress like with linen Yeah, and then you're not making a whole lot of you're not making a lot of progress progress yeah yeah something mm -hmm. like that okay oh you have my cahoot sweater on here how did I not know that oh, oh my gosh I just packed so up all those because I'm teaching sweaters on Saturday yeah. in Dar at Darnan anyway and let me tell you I have not alphabetized and packed sweaters in several years and I was just sweating and I was like couldn't find the labels for some of them. So I had to make new labels and put them on. And I'm like, oh, this is a very heavily like yeah. pre-weighted class to teach to get everything ready. 
but I did get out all those Kahoot sweaters and put them in there. And, and it, that's yeah. just a very fond memory for me. Yeah. Um, so I knit a hootless Kahoot sweater. Um, at the beginning, um, for that book, Corey thought, you know, not everyone's going to love the owls. I wonder if someone would knit a Kahoot sweater without the owls. And I was like, I'll do it. No problem. So, um, here's my hootless cahoots sweater. Um, it's just a, a perfect cardigan pattern um, yep. with a yoke at the top, at the top. And then here is what my gradient looks like. I had, um, this yarn in mind for a hero. Um, when Corey knit all of her hero sweaters, I thought, oh, that's such a pretty sweater. I want to knit my own. And then I never did. And I never did. I continued to not knit it. Um, and then she talked about having a owl-less Kahoot sweater. And I thought, I have the perfect yarn for that. Um, so yeah, and I've always wanted a purple sweater. So I got one. And I had um, a lot of bits and bobs of different colors. So that was perfect to use up for the sweater. Because you don't really need a lot to do no. the cuffs and the hem and the button band. So yeah, so that's what I did. And I love it. And this is another sweater that... Um, often lives in my car through the winter because it's easy to just throw on over whatever you've got on. Yeah. I'm usually wearing yeah. a long sleeve t-shirt and it's perfect. Yeah. Um, for, I've got a lot of new viewers. So this is the owl sweater. It's called cahoots. And, um, and so, cause Megan and I's company was called knit cahoots. And so I did it with gradient. So you did six owls or two owls or three owls or whatever, you know, however many owls you kind of wanted to put on. And then um, several people, Amber knit it in. Um, so I also have one that is short sleeved with rainbow owls. That was the original one that I wore to Rhinebeck that year. So here's one that someone knit with just the two owls at the top. And then, um, and here's Amber's. So hers was short sleeved with just the, I love corrugated ribbing. I just think it's so striking. It's it, it it's is. easy to do. Like you, it's, it's color work, but you can drop your yarn because it's just knit to pearl to and pick it up. Like you mm -hmm. don't have to be a two-handed color work knitter. And then adding all those colors in there um it's just really so made it very visual right it, mm -hmm. yeah oh look i know i, I knew there was the a picture of, of the two of us wearing it yep there are the two of you wearing it yep that sweater so and that's um, right outside um where you did a pop-up oh yeah it is oh remember you gosh, were on that... the you were on the porch with your like trunk shell yeah yeah that it, oh gosh my gosh that's so so long ago july of 2017 you finished it so that would have been when we went to Rhinebeck would have been yeah. the fall of 2017 wow that's a yeah. long time ago that yeah. yeah so I have a gold one um that doesn't have that is a little oversized for me and I kind of like it as kind of a an oversized you know throw on it doesn't close in the front it's not meant to mm -hmm. to really close in the front um kind of a sweater uh you could make the button band wider um but yeah that that's a, a fond memory again Stacy you're just taking me down like our I friendship know. road our friendship road oh look at me but I'm um, uh okay. oh yeah because <laughs> I have that I have a sweater named friendship road too for those of you that are are new okay Bambara wrap by Amba O'Brien wow that's a tongue twister Yes. And I would love for you, um, if you can put a, the picture in that yep. I emailed, um, because it has three or four different colors of yarn and uh, word to the wise, if your child has an interesting form of color blindness, maybe don't let them help you pick the yarn because it's not going to work out. Um, so I sent Corey the picture of what it looked like before. And okay. I just yep. kept knitting thinking it's going to be better and it never got better. So uh, Walmart to the rescue and I bought a bottle of Rit dye and dyed the whole thing um, to make it look better and more cohesive. Uh, it was a 
actual visual nightmare. It's see, oh my gosh, it is absolutely terrible. Just a nightmare in progress. But um, I did tie little knots in the far corners. It's a giant um, parallelogram. So it's sort of knit on the bias. And when I um, dyed the whole thing blue, it worked out great. So here is one end. Oh. And this is another project that um, basically lives in my car. It's really long. It's just a really good, um, like I said, parallelogram type stole um, that I love to just wrap around a couple times and then just split in and out of stores as I need to. Um, it's yeah, really I'm squishy. looking at it on Ravelry and I see what you mean, but uh, it's not horrific. It's just horrific. <laughs> horrific. Okay. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't, I don't know what I was thinking. It, it was terrible, but also I'm not sure what I would have used any of those yarns for separately unless I knit socks with them. So, um, because I was for a while, a prolific sock knitter. So there's the, yes. And that's, that's what it looks like now. It's much, 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 much better and wearable. Um, but the stuff, the yarn in the middle I don't even remember what the fiber content was, but it didn't take the dye at all. And this is yarn that I hand spun. So that was also pretty cool that I put my yeah. own hand spun. For a while, I had a spinning wheel. Um, so yeah, it was fun to use my own hand spun for that. I can see how it, it was kind of blue, dark blue on the ends and then kind of that brownie gray in the middle. Yeah, which mm -hmm. kind of makes it look like a gradient. Like it couldn't have it does, yeah. worked out any better. No. Yeah. I, Thank goodness I for Rit Dye. With, with, my, um, with my beige colored big storage demune shawl because everybody said, well, knit it in khaki because it'll go with everything. Well, it didn't go with anything because I have yeah. nothing in my closet that has khaki or brown or beige in it, right? <laughs> right. And so I gave it to a lady who was who dyed some yarn and she threw it in a, her end of day dye pot right like I said I don't care what color this comes back right and so she put it in there and it was kind of this navy bluey color yeah. that it came back and it's beautiful I'm not as I love much it. of a blue wear but it so much more wearable than yes it was again as I knit it how did I continue to go when I knew that khaki would never be something <laughs> And mine was like, it was just, you know, I don't hear this term as frequently anymore, but for a while, <laughs> probably a decade ago, people said clown barf. And the, I cannot think of anything that more epitomized that term than the way that shawl came out at the end. I am almost sure I didn't even block it once I finished it. Um, I just immediately dyed it and then you know, washed it, rinsed it until no more dye came out because our carpets are light in color. So I didn't, <laughs> I didn't want a giant um, blue parallelogram on my carpet, but um, rinsed it until it came clear. And then I, I blocked it from there. Yeah. It, so, um, yeah. You, but you liked the pattern. Like I the love the pattern. Amba O'Brien has great patterns. Um, that's not yes. the only one I've knit of hers. Um, she has some fun Advent ones. If you have an Advent kit you haven't used yet. Um, yeah, she yeah. has good ones. Yeah, yeah. Kind of that um, parallel, everything's on the bias, increasing on one yes. end and decreasing on everything's the other. Everything's on yeah. the bias, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's really cute. Okay, yeah. this is a crochet project. Yes. The Owl, um, owl Lovey. Yeah, I am not a very good crocheter. I started a crochet project last night and um, my husband was laughing at me because every new row, I had to look up another YouTube video on how to do the stitch because I never remember. And then he was, I was explaining to him that also if it's an American pattern, you have to make sure you find an American video because the abbreviations in American English are different than the ones that they use in Britain. So it was a whole thing. And now I'm stuck on a, a row. And that's the problem with free patterns is sometimes there's a little mistake and you am not, are not sure how to proceed, especially in crochet. Um, so I, you know, you have seasons in your life and at a season in my life, I feel like every other week I was going to a baby shower and this was a really cute pattern. Um, I was for a baby shower, so I don't have it. So Corey can put in a picture. Um, 
it's just a really cute little lovey for the car seat. And then um, there's a little owl that is sewn into the middle. And it's just a really cute little, little guy, little pattern and um, just a fun little set. Yeah, it's really cute. Is the owl knit? Um, crochet? Probably, maybe. No. I don't remember. No, I think crocheted. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it would make sense that they wouldn't probably. I remember. It was a long time ago. Um, right. But yeah, super fun. And, you know, to this day, I still have, you know, a bag of polyfill every now and again when uh, the mood strikes to just make something really quick and little. Um, it's fun. <laughs> I'm laughing because um, at Darn It Anywhere, where I'm teaching tomorrow, they have a uh, one of the um, gnomes by Imagined Landscapes, a giant out of bulky yarn. And we were over wow. there for sweater camp. So I ordered the bulky yarn and I cast on when we got home, a giant gnome. It'll be, you know, this big. And yeah. when you said polyfill for a small item, I'm like, I'm going to have to buy bags of polyfill bags. to fill this. So it's, yeah. I'm making it out of orange and white and um, teal, and it's got a striped body and a pointed hat and uh, several people made them in bulky yarn. And I just thought mm -hmm. it would be really fun to have for the holidays or to even gift to my nieces, just this big, yeah. cause it's, it's um, one of her simplest ones, you know, it's just the round body and then it starts at the top mm -hmm. and then you pick up and you just go down and. So it doesn't have a whole lot of, of stuff going on, but it's going to take so much polyfill. It's going to knit up really quickly. For sure. But I haven't, I've gotten this far and now it's just sitting in the box in the chair saying, when you get done with all this design work that you signed up for. Right. Um, I'll, then, I'll be right here yeah. waiting. Yeah. I'll be here right along with the four sweaters that I also would love to have still worn this winter, yes. but they're not done yes. yet. Um, yeah. It's, there's always something waiting. People say all the time, oh, I wish I had more time to knit. If I quit my job, you'll never have enough time. There is ne never. no matter what you do, like I could knit all day, every day, some days, right? Like that's my job and I, I don't have enough time. There's no, to knit all because the, the moment, you you, knit. yeah, the moment you open Instagram or, you know, whatever, Yes. There's another pattern. There's another thing that catches your eye and you're like, oh my gosh, that would be so much fun to have. And um, so I cast on, uh, maybe it's called the twirling cocoon. Um, it's a crocheted sort of shrug. It You just make a giant square and then you fold it in half and sew the short ends together to make sleeves. And I was like, oh, it's so pretty. And then I saw it again, like another knitting company had shown it. And I was like, okay, well, that's a sign. It's a sign. I have to start it. So we'll see how far I get. I'm only on row six. So we'll see. Yeah. It, 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 there's just, I mean, you can always, you could, everybody would love more time, right? Like more time to knit, but you'll just never get everything that you see no. that you want to get done. You know, I, okay. same thing with yarn, collecting all these yarns that, you know, yeah. I have yarn in my cart right now. And I'm like, why, why are you buying this and thinking, oh, I'll cast that on tomorrow and have it done the next day. Uh, yeah. That's the lie I tell myself. <laughs> yes. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> okay. The last one on your list is the Aaron sweater by Lion Brandt. Yeah. Um, I will, let me start off by saying if your person is broad shouldered, figure out how to do short rows because it doesn't fit him great um but here it is oh my gosh um I knit this for my husband for Christmas one year um he never wears it because he's scared he's going to mess it up which is you know it is what it is um but I love it it's really cozy um I just use um lion brand fisherman's wool to knit it. That's um, a lovely wool. I wish it that really is. It, it is. Wouldn't get it kind says of a that bad it's worsted. For, I know. Being big um, it says that it's worsted. On. It's absolutely not worsted. It is a very light worsted bordering on DK, if not sport in some places. Um, the other issue sometimes it comes in a really big skein of yarn. And so very frequently there are knots. 
but it's wool. So if you are inclined to spit splice and you can just use water instead of spit, you can spit splice or Russian join or any of the other joins. Um, but it was really, it was great to knit. Um, I, unlike um, others that we know, I do not have a problem dropping down several rows to fix a mistake. Um, so I'm also, this was, this was a good, um, project that I messed up on one particular cable. And so I just dropped down the, just those stitches instead of ripping out rows of yes, work. Yes. Um, and I did it and, uh, it looked wild and very scary, but, um, I taught knitting for a, a while, a long time ago though. But the always thing was just don't freak out. And don't pull on your knitting. Yeah. Like if you drop all of your stitches, stay calm. If you need to take a minute, take a minute. <laughs> but don't freak out and yank at it. Get a smaller set of needles. Slowly pick up your stitches. And then start going. You'll come to some that are picked up in the wrong orientation. But, you know, I taught my people how to put it up <laughs> the right way. If it's a pair of pants, the one on the right goes in the front. And so. So yeah, so um, it was a good um, lesson for me on how to uh, pick up and fix your mistakes without having to rip out rows and rows of knitting. You can just drop down those few stitches and pick them up and fix them. Yeah, I teach that at the end of my fixing mistakes class. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of people that get to the fix number eight or nine or 10 and they start to kind of drop out like if they're like, I'll just watch, but I'm not trying that, right? And I just yeah. think it's such a great skill. I mean, I have it a is. lot of beginners that take that class and they're not even knitting cables yet. So I get why mm -hmm. sometimes they're like, I don't even know how to make the cable. So I'll just watch you. But, you know, yeah. and then other people who come just to the class to learn, you know, a couple of those mm -hmm. skills that are a little more challenging where you're dropping down edge stitches, like what happens if an edge stitch falls off in several drop off the end, right? That I don't know. I need to come take that class from you. Oh, yeah. No. And you know what? You don't because you can go on YouTube, Stacy, and find it. And um, the garter and the stockinette are both out there. And I okay. practiced and practiced and it, it's a you'll be shocked, shocked. People are shocked at how easy it is to pick up. You pick up two loops at, or uh, as knit on the stockinette side when the loops hanging out. It's so mm -hmm. it, yeah, but people don't know how to fix that. So they rip out, they completely yeah. rip out and start over. Cause they're like, I lost the edge stitches and I don't know how to fix that. So mm -hmm. that's another one that I think people just really don't know how to do. Yeah. And this sweater was good also for cabling without a uh, cable needle, oh. um, which is, makes everything go much faster because you don't have to pick something else up um, because there's only ever um, you're only ever crossing two stitches at a time. So um, that was maybe three in the middle, but it only three. So definitely was, doable, do you especially think that that with pattern was sticky free? wool yarn. I know it's free. Uh-huh. Okay. Aaron's yep. sweater by Lion Brand. Cause that's beautiful. It had a different name and I, I won't say it for fear of they changed it for a reason. So okay. I don't know if it was an okay. indigenous name that shouldn't be used any longer. Um, but it also has a TAM uh, pattern along with it. And oh. it's a unisex sweater. So, um, yeah. And Again, it's drop though, shoulder, drop shoulder, right? Um, I couldn't tell. No. Oh, okay. No. Um, it's not a drop shoulder. But okay. I do recommend learning. Um, this was before I would have felt comfortable doing short rows. And I definitely need short rows in the back. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. At the neck, maybe? Yeah. 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 Do them before. Maybe you start the cables, have a little stock net up there. <laughs> well, you could. But you could also, I mean, it really would just take probably one more set of the braid in the middle it, it would have been fine. It really just needed that four or five extra rows though. Yep. But um, yeah. you live and you learn and he doesn't wear it anyway because he's too nervous that he's going to wreck it. So um, he- Do you think one of the boys it. would ever wear it? No, that's not their style. No, no, I know. But like, as they get older, I think, you know, 
they might Kylie, grow into it. When Kylie came over, she hasn't worn a hand knitted item from me in years, but when she came over and I was selling, I'm still selling all those vintage sweaters. Right. And I, mm -hmm. um, and just getting them out of my house and donating the money to the food shelf. Um, she, she just stood there and tried on, tried on, tried on. Right. And she was like, yeah. Oh, I love this. And I was like, you haven't worn something or asked for something hand knit for me or whatever for yeah. whatever. And she brought three back to me and, um, and said, do you think we could wash these and block them a little longer? So I did that and they're still sitting on the chair. That's what made it, me think of it, but her, mm -hmm. yeah, her style and her attitude toward my knitting now that she's 27 is changing, right? Like they, they yeah. go, Oh gosh, my mom knit this whole thing and it, I could maybe yeah. wear it. Yeah. As, as old gentlemen, that is what I'm thinking. They could wear it as an older gentleman. Yes. I'll just put it in a little, a little chest for them for later. Yeah, for sure. I want to thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, it, was it was awesome. Fun. It was just great to talk to you. Um, I miss you. I'm really bummed that we're not traveling more yet. And it, everybody's busy. Every, everyone's so busy. busy. There's, um, there's a little rumor going on that we might do Rhinebeck, Bonnie and Corey are, she's never been. And we might, we might do Rhinebeck in October. We're thinking, well, we want to do something. I mean, at this uh -huh. point, I'm tired of staying home or going to events where I only teach because for the yep. next three weekends, I'm teaching Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Saturday, Friday, Sunday. <laughs> it's just yeah. like my weekends are just booked. So I, I will, I will do shepherd's harvest and I will have people probably come, but, um, yeah, we're thinking about doing something in the fall. And, and Bonnie said she's never been to Rhinebeck. I don't think Matt or Renee was, were really interested in going back. It's, it's an expensive trip and I get that right. Because it, the travel to get there, it is yeah. easier to go to something that you can drive, you know, a few hours to, but I think we might. Well, and the I other said, thing about Rhinebeck is it's tough to get to Rhinebeck. Right. There's no, there's no big airport in Rhinebeck. So you're, you know, when I've gone, I've flown to, mostly I've flown to DC because a group of people that I have gone with before live in and around that area. So I've flown into different DC airports and then they picked me up and then it was still another, you know, five or six hour drive. I've flown yep. into Boston Logan. I think I flew into Hartford one time. Yep. Yeah. That's where we so, flew. Yeah, and just... then I've flown into Albany, which is mm -hmm. probably the closest. It's not the cheapest, yep. no. but it was like an hour drive, which, you know, yeah. really wasn't bad, but yeah, it's renting a car. You know, yep. I, Megan took the train that one time, but then Rhinecliff mm -hmm. is not close, right? Yeah. Oh, is it not? I don't yeah. know. No, Rhinecliff, the train station is I'm going to say 15 minutes, you know, driving it, 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 like you couldn't just walk into Rhinebeck and, and have a place to stay with your suitcase. Like the right. roads are, you know, it's yep. several, many miles to the, yep. you know, and so, and I think people took, tried to take an Uber and they were kind of like, but Rhinecliff is the town is a train station and three houses. Oh, so along difficult to find an Uber even. Right. Because yeah. it's so rural, you know, mm -hmm. it's so absolutely rural. Um, but anyway, so we're thinking just, I just want to have that hope out there that we will all get yeah. to hey, and travel and go somewhere. Put it out there. Right? Maybe we can manifest it. So yeah. yeah, something. All right. Thanks so much for coming on. We're going to say goodbye. Yeah. And then I'm going to record a little bit for after this to share my new designs. All right. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Hey, the last one on your list is the Aaron sweater by Lion Brandt. Yeah. Um, I will. Let me start off by saying if your person is broad shouldered, figure out how to do short rows because it doesn't fit him great. Um, but here it is. Oh my gosh. Um, I knit this for my husband for Christmas one year. Um, he never wears it because he's scared he's going to mess it up, which is, you know, it is what it is. Um, but I love it. It's really cozy. Um, I just use um, Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool. 
to knit it. That's um, a lovely wool. I wish it that really is. It, it wouldn't is, get it kind says of that a it's bad worsted. rap for I know. being big um, box It says store that it's worsted. Yarn. It's absolutely not worsted. It is a very light worsted bordering on DK, if not sport in some places. Um, the other issue sometimes, it comes in a really big skein of yarn. And so very frequently there are knots, but it's wool. So if you are inclined to spit splice and you can just use water instead of spit, you can spit splice or Russian join or any of the other joins. Um, but it was really, it was great to knit. Um, I, unlike, um, others that we know, I do not have a problem dropping down several rows to fix a mistake. Um, so I'm also, this was, this was a good, um, project that I messed up on one particular cable. And so I just dropped down the, just those stitches instead of ripping out rows of work. Yes. Um, and I did it and, uh, it looked wild and very scary, but, um, I taught knitting for a, a while, a long time ago though. But the always thing was just don't freak out and don't pull on your knitting. Yeah. Like if you drop all of your stitches, stay calm. If you need to take a minute, take a minute, <laughs> but don't freak out and yank at it. Get a smaller set of needles, slowly pick up your stitches. And then start going. You'll come to some that are picked up in the wrong orientation. But, you know, I taught my people how to put it up the right way. If it's a pair of pants. The one on the right goes in the front. And so, so yeah. So um, it was a good um, lesson for me on how to uh, pick up and fix your mistakes without having to rip out rows and rows of knitting. You can just drop down those few stitches and pick them up and fix them. Yeah, I teach that at the end of my fixing mistakes class. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of people that get to the fix number eight or nine or 10, and they start to kind of drop out. Like they're like, I'll just watch, but I'm not trying that. Right. And I just yeah. think it's such a great skill. I mean, I have it a is. lot of beginners that take that class and they're not even knitting cables yet. So I get why mm -hmm. sometimes they're like, I don't even know how to make the cable. So I'll just watch you. But, you know, yeah. and then other people who come just to the class to learn you know, a couple of those skills that are a little more challenging where you're dropping down edge stitches, like what happens if an edge stitch falls off and several drop off the end, right? That I don't know. I need to come take that class from you. <laughs> oh, you'll be shocked, shocked. People are shocked at how easy it is to pick up. You pick up two loops at, or uh, as knit on the stockinette side when the loop's hanging out. It's so, mm -hmm. it, yeah, but People don't know how to fix that. So they rip out. They completely yeah. rip out and start over because they're like, I lost the edge stitches and I don't know how to fix that. So mm -hmm. that's another one that I think people just really don't know how to do. Yeah. And this sweater was good also for cabling without a uh, cable needle, oh. um, which is makes everything go much faster because you don't have to pick something else up um, because there's only ever um, you're only ever crossing two stitches at a time. So um, that was maybe three in the middle, but it only three. So definitely was, doable, do you especially think that that with pattern was sticky free? wool yarn. I know it's free. Uh-huh. Okay. Aaron yep. sweater by Lion Brand. Cause that's beautiful. It had a different name and I, I won't say it for fear of they changed it for a reason. So okay. I don't know if it was an okay. indigenous name that shouldn't be used any longer. Um, but it also has a Tam uh, pattern along with it. And oh. it's a unisex sweater. So um, yeah. And Again, it's drop no. shoulder, drop shoulder, right? Um, I couldn't tell. No. Oh, okay. No. Um, It's not a drop shoulder. But okay. I do recommend learning. Um, this was before I would have felt comfortable doing short rows. And I definitely need short rows in the back. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. At the neck, maybe? Yeah. 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 Do them before. Maybe you start the cables, have a little stock net up there. <laughs> well, you could. But you could also, I mean, it really would just take probably one more set of the braid in the middle it, it would have been fine. It really just needed that four or five extra rows though. Yeah. But um, yeah. you live and you learn and he doesn't wear it anyway because he's too nervous that he's going to wreck it. So um, he Do you think one of the boys it. would ever wear it? 
No, that's not their style. No, no, I know. But like, as they get older, I think, you know, they might Kylie, grow into it. When Kylie came over, she hasn't worn a hand knitted item for me in years. But when she came over and I was selling, I'm still selling all those vintage sweaters, right? And I mm -hmm. um, am just getting them out of my house and donating the money to the food shelf. Um, she she just stood there and tried on, tried on, tried on, right? And she was like, yeah. oh, I love this. And I was like, you haven't worn something or asked for something hand knit for me or whatever for yeah. whatever. And she brought three back to me and um, and said, do you think we could wash these and block them a little longer? So I did that and they're still sitting on the chair. That's what made it, me think of it. But her, mm -hmm. yeah, her style and her attitude toward my knitting now that she's 27 is changing right like they they yeah. go oh gosh my mom knit this whole thing and it, I could maybe yeah. wear it yeah as as old gentlemen that is what I'm thinking they could wear it as an older gentleman yes <laughs> I'll just put it in a little a little chest for them for later yeah for sure I want to thank you so much for your time today it was, it was awesome fun. it was just great to talk to you um I miss you I'm really bummed that we're not traveling more yet and it, everybody's busy every We're everyone's so busy. busy there's um there's a little rumor going on that we might do Rhinebeck Bonnie and Corey are she's never been and we might we might do Rhinebeck in October we're thinking well we want to do something I mean at this uh -huh. point I'm tired of staying home or going to events where I only teach because for the yep. next three weekends I'm teaching Saturday Sunday Saturday Saturday Friday, Sunday, I just yeah. like my weekends are just booked. So I, I will, I will do shepherd's harvest and I will have people probably come, but um, yeah, we're thinking about doing something in the fall. And, and Bonnie said she's never been to Rhinebeck. I don't think Matt or Renee was, were really interested in going back. It's, it's an expensive trip and I get that right. Because it, the travel to get there, it is yeah. easier to go to something that you can drive, you know, a few hours too, but I think we might. Well, and the I other said, thing about Rhinebeck is it's tough to get to Rhinebeck, right? There's no, there's no big airport in Rhinebeck. So you're, you know, when I've gone, I've flown to, mostly I've flown to DC because a group of people that I have gone with before live in and around that area. So I've flown into different DC airports and then they picked me up and then it was still another you know, five or six hour drive. I've flown yep. into Boston Logan. I think I flew into Hartford one time. Yep. Yeah, that's where we so, flew. Yeah, and just... then I've flown into Albany, which is mm -hmm. probably the closest. It's not the cheapest, yep. but no. it was like an hour drive, which, you know, yeah. really wasn't bad. But yeah, it's renting a car. You know, I, yep. Megan took the train that one time, but then Rhinecliff mm -hmm. is not close, right? Yeah. Oh, is it not? I don't it, know. No, Rhinecliff, the train station is, I'm going to say 15 minutes, you know, driving it, 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 like you couldn't just walk into Rhinebeck and, and have a place to stay with your suitcase. Like the right. roads are, you know, it's yep. several, many miles to the, yep. you know, and so, and I think people took, tried to take an Uber and they were kind of like, but Rhinecliff is the town is a train station and three houses. Oh, so along difficult to find an Uber even. Right. Because yeah. it's so rural, you know, mm -hmm. it's so absolutely rural. Um, but anyway, so we're thinking just, I just want to have that hope out there that we will all get yeah, together hey, and travel and go somewhere. Put it out there. Right? Maybe we can manifest it. So yeah, yeah something. All right. Thanks so much for coming on. We're going to say goodbye. Yeah. And then I'm going to record a little bit for after this to share my new designs. All right. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Bye. I'm back. I just finished recording with Stacy, who is such an amazing knitter and a great friend. And yeah, I'm just so tickled with our little walk down memory lane. I found this photo of the four of us, me with orange bangs. What was I thinking from 2021 at the Duchess County Fairgrounds? So, and actually, I have quite a few pictures of of all of us together, <laughs> traveling together, and 
um, being at different events. This is all of us at Rhinebeck in 2019. So Matt, Amber, Corey, Renee, Stacy, and Steve of Leading Men Fiber Arts. I know I have a I have a bit of a um, shadow on that one, but that yeah that was 2019. I was just trying to figure out when we all met. And here it is, the picture of Stacy and I in 2015 wearing uh, novelty yarn sweaters that I brought because Stephen B was presenting. And so that would have been um, when we met. So it would have been June of 2015. Wow, that's incredible that many years ago, right? That you're still friends and hanging out. And we have a Marco Polo group that we chat on intermittently. It's not super regular, but we try to get on and just touch base with one another because we live all over and it's, you know, it's hard to kind of keep track if you're not seeing people. So I'd like to introduce you to my newest pattern. This is May's shawl. I decided to name it after my mother-in-law. Um, you all know that I have fond memories of her and her, one of her favorite colors and the color that looked so beautiful on her was pink. And when I got this yarn from Sam of Lavender Loon, I was just smitten. I was just, it's um, her DK Yak base. This is the first color I got and I picked this up at Shepherd's Harvest from her. And what I wanted was a shawl that when you wrapped it around had something going on at the neck, right? Like so that this cabled section that goes all the way along the top flat edge of the shawl would like show up, right? That would be the, the prominent feature. And so most of the shawl is knit in stockinette. This could easily be done in garter. If you prefer garter, you just knit across instead of pearl, across, pearl back. And then it has um, this edge here where you pick up and you just knit ribbing going down. And at the center point, I put again, a little bit of cable so that you have a little cable right here at the bottom. And as I said, on the pink one, I put tassels on and it lays so nicely. My tassels are kind of fat and full. I kind of like I kind of like that. Um, I didn't, I cut them a little shorter and I thought that that was kind of cute. Um, but what I really wanted was a really easy to knit shawl, kind of advanced beginner friendly, um, so that it didn't have a lot of stuff going on, but that you could take two skeins of DK weight yarn and kind of get a shawl. Now, Sam's yarn has a lot of yardage on it. So it's a little bit, um, a bigger skein. Um, for what you get in normal DK. So if you have short DK skeins, something under <laughs> 250 yards, 220 yards, which is really in that worsted weight, you know, it's really, then you will need three skeins to finish. I didn't use all of um, the two skeins of Sam's yarn to try to keep it in that weight. Um, but on all three of the shawls, the, the weight is listed as and the yardage so you will know exactly how much to buy. I just wanted something that was where you were maybe learning how to do a cable for the first time along an edge. It's easy, you just knit over, knit back, and then you do the little cable along the edge where you cross it every fourth round. Um, so it does start um, working. You work from one end, you cast on, and you work back and forth this way. You're just going like this and then you apply the ribbing afterwards. If you don't wanna put the ribbing on, you wouldn't have to. You would have just a lovely um, I-cord edge along the edge of the shawl, just like that. And so you wouldn't even have to put the ribbing on if you didn't want to. If you wanted to do the ribbing in another color, you could certainly do, you know, add a different colored ribbing. You could add a speckle. You could do the whole thing in speckle and add a solid along the edge. I just wanted it to be kind of another one of Corey's more simple knits where you get a beautiful shawl, easy to wear, DK weight, so it works up faster than fingering. Could you make it in fingering? Absolutely. Could you add um, length to it? Absolutely. If you wanted it to be one of those giant shawls. But I was just really um, struggling with um, keeping it simple. It's really hard to design something 
when you think like, I should be adding more, I should put some stitches in here, I should add some texture, and it, it's just hard to sit with yourself and say, no, leave it alone, it will be fine. So this sample is actually Sam of Lavender Loon sample, and this was knit by Tiffany, um, who is a friend from Sweater Camp who knit this and helped me with the pattern so much. Oh my gosh. Amazing sample knitter. <laughs> um, an amazing tech knitter. I tech edit knitted knitter. Oh yeah. She I owe her. And then this one was knit by my friend Annette, who lives way down in southern Arizona. Um, and also um, helped me figure out what I was doing wrong um, in the center of the shawl. So you knit and increase, and then you knit some plain, and then you decrease on the other side. And um, I just didn't have it centered quite right for the ribbing, and so mine, when I first did it, was offset my little V, and I was like, what did what happened here? My numbers were off. Um, but we got it figured out thanks to them, and they both had to rip back a lot <laughs> to help me. And, and get it figured out. So I, I really do um, owe them. But yeah, so it's just a beautiful, easy to knit. Um, I, I would say that this would be really easy travel knitting. Once you probably do the first 12 rows and you've crossed two cables, you have it down. But then when you go to wear it, when you put it on, you will have that, you know, I-cord edge um, that has worked as you knit. And then, you know, to have a little kind of something up around your neck. So I'm, I'm pleased with it. I'm happy that I got it done. Um, I hope that you all love it. If you are a newsletter subscriber, which means you've signed up on my website, you've put your name and your email address in on my website, you'll get my newsletter, which always gives a discount for this pattern. And uh, it will be coming out uh, the day that this goes live, hopefully. My photo shoot is this afternoon. <laughs> And it's very, very windy out. So we're going to have to find a secluded place because we plan to meet at a park. I have uh, two more patterns coming out on the next podcast. Um, uh, my pinky swear hat and socks. And so we're going to take those photos today too. So I'm hoping that we can find, we might have to go into, indoors somewhere to take these, but that'll be fine. Um, and I'm going to model in because... <laughs> I just can't afford to keep hiring a model and a photographer and a tech editor. Um, so I'm going to do it myself this time and, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, I hope that you, um, that you give this pattern a little love, go out and, you know, favorite on Ravelry or like it, or it will be for sale on Etsy and my website and Ravelry, as well as eventually Lovecrafts. Lovecrafts has a slower process they have to approve before they put it up and it always takes a few days. So, and since I don't have the photos, I can't take them early and then get that done. So I just wanted to share my new shawl called May, M-A-E, that was her name, May Laverne, um, but her favorite color. And I just thought, oh, what a way to honor her and have a pattern named after her. I know not everyone loved their mother-in-law. <laughs> Her son didn't always love her because she was chatty Kathy like me. <laughs> That's probably why we did end up getting along. Okay, we have to do some giveaways. The winner of the three skeins of gray yarn that are all ready to go here is GA Teacher Friend. So I don't have a first name on that, but if you are GA Teacher Friend on YouTube, then get in touch and I will get this out in the mail to you. I have not heard back from the winner of the project bag from last time um, or the chocolate bars. So you people need to go back and watch. If you're going to comment and you're going to try to win a prize, then will you please write yourself a little note to come back and watch the next podcast so that I don't have to sit with these prizes for long. I did get um, people from the previous podcast um, that I was searching for. I went out on Ravelry and tried to find them and found, you know, two people named Michelle who follow the podcast and only have one L. And then I got in touch and said, okay. And then the one lady got back and she was like, it's not me. So <laughs> it's just a lot of running around and rigmarole. So 
I need a way to get in touch with you. So please put your name and your Ravelry ID when you comment. Please, please, please. Um, so if you're the winner, I can find you quickly. Um, the prize for this week is a big bag. I have a skein of one and only yarn from our friend Janet. It's kind of this um, brownie tonal lights and darks. Very, very pretty. And then uh, two sets of bobbins. So if you are, if you have leftover yarns or you need bobbins, um, I have a large and a small set, as well as this small um, knitting pouch here that Susan also donated. So these are coming from my friend Susan. She donated this little pouch that she got as a gift. Um, and so that is also in this bag. So if you would like to win the prize this week, you need to comment something with the word friend because my friend Stacy was on the podcast and we reminisced about our friendships and how long we've known each other. So please comment with something using the word friend and tell me about your oldest friend or the friend you remember from elementary school or the friend you met at a knitting retreat. Um, anything using the word friend, that's what I will search for and then I think what I will do is if you don't put your Ravelry name or your Instagram name or your first and last name, something so that I can identify you, I might just draw again because I have great prizes, but they're still sitting here for weeks and weeks. Um, so I need people to come back and watch at least the giveaway section um, each time or go to the Ravelry thread where I have a list of all the giveaway winners for the last 20 podcasts, they're all in there now, um, listed out so that I can kind of keep track of, of who's, who I'm giving prizes to. I am teaching a ton this month, so I will be in Stillwater on Saturday. I hope some of you are coming. I know she added some more spots. I'm sweaters in the morning, shawls in the afternoon. In Northfield on Sunday, I'll be teaching beaded knitting with my Christina hat and cowl. Which reminds me, I have to send an email about that right now. Um, my beginning knitting class got canceled. I did not have enough people. Um, and then I'm teaching Fixing Mistakes in Norwood and then Fixing Mistakes in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Friday and Sunday, we added another class. The Sunday afternoon class filled. And so I'm teaching that Friday evening and Sunday. So if you are in the southern Minnesota, northwest Iowa, northeast um Nebraska, <laughs> Sioux Falls, South Dakota area. Um, I would love to see you at Prairie Road Yarn. Yeah, so um, I've not heard back from the Rose Yarn Company for what I'm teaching in April. And then I'm going to Yarn Fest. And then I'm also teaching Fixing Mistakes in April at Stephen V. You can find all my classes on my website as well as in Ravelry, in my group. I have a list and I add to that all the time when I'm, when I'm teaching new, new stuff. I'm going to ask all of you to please subscribe to the podcast. I get analytics from YouTube and 19% of you who watch my podcast are not subscribed. And I would really love it if you would just hit the subscribe button. It doesn't do a whole lot for you, but it does a whole bunch for me. It really helps me with my, um, my analytics and who's watching and how many clicks I get and so right now, if you are watching, would you please just make sure that that subscribe button is hit for me. And then I want to talk to you a little bit about Yarn Fest. Yarn Fest is coming up in about a month and it is in Loveland, Colorado. And I would love to see some of you there. So make a trip, make a plan, find a friend. Um, let's travel. Let's go to Yarn Fest. It is an amazing event in a beautiful, beautiful conference and event center where you stay right in the hotel there although I think other people some of the vendors stay um, at a local hotel that's just down the road because it's a little bit cheaper um, but there is a like um, restaurant and the marketplace is right there and all the classes are right there so you just don't have to go anywhere. Um, Loveland is pretty easy to get to um, from the airport it's maybe how far? 45 minute drive. Um, but the event is has not been as well attended. It's not growing as much as they would like. Like the classes get 
full, but not overly full. So you get really good attention from all the teachers. They have sewing that goes on and beading that goes on. And I'm teaching at both of them. So I'm teaching at this one in Loveland. And then I'm teaching the first week in August, August 1st, 2nd, 3rd, um, out in um, Pennsylvania. Yes, so July 31st through August 3rd, and that is Bead Fest and Yarn Fest. And so if you're into beading at all, um, classes are up, registration is open, and I would love to meet some of you. We could have lunch. Um, I'll have to get in touch with Shana because Shana, my friend Shana lives out there. And um, yeah, it's just, an, it's a really fun, amazing event. Really well organized, very well put on. Um, the classes are offered all day, morning, afternoon, and evening. You can sign up for one or 10. Um, so I just wanted to put a plug in because um, <clears throat> my classes are all a go but one. Um, they're still waiting on a few more registrations, but um, I know that other people don't have full classes yet. And so it, it's not too late, right? We have a month. You could just say, you know what? It's easier to plan it sometimes when it's a month away than it's when it's six months away. Um, don't forget, I have a questions thread in my Ravelry group. If you have any questions you want to ask me, I'm happy to answer. We will have a drawing again at the end of this month for because I draw out of that thread every three months um, for prizes for anybody who actually asks a question that I can answer on the podcast. So I have a question this week from Naughty Knitter 86 and that is Laura Lee from Charleston, Indiana. So hi, Laura Lee. So I do have a question this week from Naughty Knitter 86 and this came in two weeks ago, um, but I missed it last time. Um, so I wanted to answer for her. This is, hi, Corey, just wondering, what are your thoughts about mixing yarns in a project? For instance, a single ply with a regular merino nylon sock yarn or brands of yarn in a single project? No problem. I have no problem with it. <laughs> I love mixing yarns. I love holding yarns double. Um, a single ply yarn is going to wear differently than a high twist yarn. So single ply yarns are not great for a whole lot of things in my personal humble opinion, right? Because they're going to pill. Have I knit with single ply yarns? Yes. Have I knit a sweater with a single ply yarn? Yes. Do I know that I'm gonna have to depill it all the time? Yes. So it would wear differently, but if you want to um, stripe it or use it in color work, I don't think it will matter. All I would say is that a, um, a single ply yarn can be a little more fuzzy than it's a high twist yarn because a single ply yarn is just not twisted at all. It's just kind of pulled off. And so when you rub against it, fibers come off. With, with a twist yarn that's twisted really tightly, when you rub against it, there's not as much surface area. So it doesn't pill as much. So a lot of times people will only use single ply yarns for like shawls because the wear and the you know, you're not actually wearing it on a flat surface where you're rubbing it up against something. Um, knitting single ply yarn at a tighter gauge can help with that, but I would mix, no problem. And I have hundreds of times mixed two different brands of yarn. The issue with doing that is that you want to know whether or not it's the same weight of yarn. The, the content of the yarn is important. So if it's silk or... Um, Oh, uh, what else? A, a BFL or, and, and you're mixing it with a Merino, that can make a difference for your drape. But um, otherwise, I, I have no problem mixing. I would not love mixing a 400 yard fingering weight yarn with a 463 yard fingering weight yarn side by side if I'm using the same needle size, because the gauge is gonna be different, right? A 463 yarn is skinnier than a 400 yarn, and they're both called fingering weight, and they're both in 100 grams. Can you mix them? Absolutely. If it's open work, will that work? Absolutely. But if you're gonna just, let's say, stripe a hat, and you're gonna use a 400 and a 463 on a size, four knitting needle or three knitting needle, it might show, right? One might be looser than the other. 
Can you do it? Absolutely. And would it probably come out in the wash when you block it? Absolutely. So I, I wouldn't have any problem doing most of that. You know, a couple of caveats, but for sure you can do that. So thanks so much for the question. I, I appreciate it. There are still some vintage sweaters waiting to be purchased. I am taking them along to darn it anyway this weekend. Um, I am teaching sweaters in the morning and shawls in the afternoon, like I said when I was talking to Stacy. So I've been getting ready for that. I have six suitcases and two boxes of sweaters to take. Oh, so much to pack up and get ready. But um, if you want to take a look at those, those are all listed in my Ravelry group. Um, I think there are about 12 sweaters left of the ones that I put up there. They're $20. I take PayPal or Venmo and all that money is just going to charity. I have just two boxes of sweaters sitting there and I just want them to go somewhere. You can rip them out. You can uh, cut them up. You can use reuse the yarn or you can wear them. Whatever, whatever works for you. Um, I would just love to have them all go to homes where there are knitters that might appreciate the fact that the yarn was nice yarn when I knit it. I have to show you something that I purchased from Joy and Home. Uh, this is on Etsy. It is a UK shop, but I was looking for a front door wreath. This is going to be my picture. <laughs> but yeah, it's um, flat backed, covered completely in felt. And then these are felted yarn balls. And I like to change my front door wreath um, according to the seasons. And I was just looking for something in my basement. And we have misplaced two wreaths. I had a giant, beautiful... Uh, Easter wreath um, that was made out of like big netting and it had a little Easter bunny. It was so cute. It's not down there. I don't know where it went. I, I don't know if someone stole it off the front door or what. And then I had a little um, St. Patrick's Day one and we can't find that either. Now granted, we need to clean the basement. We need to organize. We need to get rid of some stuff and it could have gotten put away with some of the Christmas. But anyway, uh, this was not inexpensive because this is all put together and padded and it's really firm, but I thought it was really cute. I have a, a mat for my dining room table. I have a runner for my kitchen table, and then I have some trivets that I set underneath things out of this felted balls, and I just love uh, all the colors in all of them. This is much brighter than the colors that are in my other ones, but I thought it'd be kind of fun for the front door just to hang up there. And I could actually, you know, put something in here, like set a uh, little Easter bunny or whatever, if I just decided to do that. But I thought I would sh share that with all of you. What have I been watching? I've been watching a million little things. I'm on season five. I'm exhausted. It's a great show if you haven't watched it. I'm watching it on Disney, on Hulu via Disney. I think Disney bought Hulu. Um, but anyway, um, so I had to pay for it for a month, uh, two months now, because I didn't get it done. But it is, you know, a group of friends, four men meet in an elevator that gets stalled and then they become lifelong friends. And it's the story of their relationships with other people and their children and but they um, follow kind of political trends. They follow hot topic issues um, with things that are happening like the pandemic. They were recording during the pandemic. So there are scenes where some of them are wearing masks. Um, but they, it follows these families. It's a dramatic representation of life. But things happen to these families all the time. And it gets to be a little like, wow, you know, how are they going to handle this? And how are they going to? And I'm such an empathetic soul with that kind of stuff that I get kind of like oh I take a, a little bit of that on it, it it's funny it's clever you will hate one of the characters he is a real Jack A but you grow to love him um he's just super negative and says some really inappropriate things um but yeah, there's there's just a lot. They they talk about all the different issues, um, and I have really enjoyed it. 
Um, then I watched the new podcast that came out, Knitting Up North with Jen and Karina. And they are friends that I have known on Instagram for a while and followed. Um, and then I met them at Sweater Camp and they came out to dinner with us and they started their own podcast. And so you need to go up and watch, go out and watch them. That's Knitting Up North. And um, they are best friends who love knitting. And I think they're going to have a knitting retreat here in Minnesota next winter. So if you're a Minnesotan, you might want to um, follow them. Then I watched the documentary on Wendy Williams. Wow, is that interesting. Oh my goodness, did she have a lot. So this is the older one. I'm, I haven't started watching the newer one um, because she gets she has an addiction problem. Um, but this one was one from where she just kind of tells what was going on in her life at the time. And I found that really interesting. And then uh, my friend Carla, hi Carla, sent me... Um, Pull Over Island, Iceland's National Hobby, which was a video on YouTube that is about Iceland and the sweaters in Iceland and all the Icelandic sheep and the sweaters. And that was really fun to watch. It is subtitled and I didn't find it in English. I didn't mind reading it. It's not super long. I'm going to say maybe 40 minutes or so. So I just was knitting and reading it um, as I went. But I would really recommend that. So that'll be linked in the show notes as well. And then I have finished several audiobooks. And probably my top two or three of the year. <laughs> this early in the year. So I didn't talk about it last time. But I had finished the book Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros. And that is the second one in the series. And that is, um, the first one was Fourth Wing, and I didn't think I was going to like them because they were a little science fiction-y, a little fantasy, a little um, futuristic. Loved them both. Loved them both. So good. Big, thick books. Listen on audio. Amazing reading um, by the audio narrator. So highly recommend. And then um, I finished reading Enough by Cassidy Hutchinson. And I cannot recommend this book enough to all of you. She is the young intern turned employee that was in the Trump administration that then was asked to <laughs> tell her story um, to the committee. And she perjured herself um, because Trump hired her a lawyer. And um, the lawyer said, basically, you can say, I don't remember. I don't recall. I don't have 100%. Um, accurate memory of that which is what she did and then she had second thoughts because she did have a lot of you know information about what happened for the January 6th um everyone everyone should read this book this young gal at 23 years old was working in the White House and had access to senators and clerks and pages and the president and the chief of staff, and he called her the chief of stuff. She was his right-hand person. And the things that she was asked to do and the things that she was able to do and the influence she had at that young age is just incredible. And then she gets set up for, you know, how scared she was and how she tried to make sure that things we're staying on the right track. It is a inside look at just how powerful people can be and and shouldn't be. Um, I, I I was I just learned so much. It's very um like behind the scenes West Wing. You know, if you liked that show at all, it's really kind of what happened to her. And then you know she can't find a lawyer. She's being subpoenaed. She doesn't have any money. She was working 18 and 20 hour a day, days for months and months and months. She broke up with her bro boyfriend. She, her relationship suffered and she was just doing everything she could to make this administration function and which a lot of them do, right? Their crisis has happened and then they have to go back into work and late at night and on, on the weekends. And, and then she has to testify and then she gets death threats against her because they think she turned on them and her parents. And it starts out with her history of 
who her parents are. Her um, father had a lot of mental health issues. Um, her parents get divorced and her mom remarries and then they get reporters on their front lawn. I, I just can't even say enough. Go listen to it on Audible. She reads it. It is fascinating. It is so interesting. I wasn't even sure I wanted to read it. You know, I'm pretty liberal. Um, I have pretty liberal views uh, about politics and religion and, you know, things. Um, yeah, we just should all know. We should all be more knowledgeable and more aware. And please let me know if you've read it or listened to it. Um, let's talk. <laughs> in the comments, um, email me because I just found it fascinating, really interesting. And then I just finished reading The Search by M Michelle Hunovan. And this is an older book, but my husband was just asked to be on the search committee for the pastor at our church. And that is a huge job that I don't really want him to take on because he's already on uh, the Minneapolis Synod Committee, and he was already the president of our church council. Um, but he wants to do it. Um, he, th he would be a good person to do it, but it's going to... So a friend, Janet, who was on the podcast, recommended the search because this is a story of a woman who was on a search committee for a, a church. And it's funny and interesting and... Um, it actually happens to be a Unitarian church where their beliefs are very open and um, you can believe in God or not believe in God. Um, they're very socially active um, for social causes. Um, they want to stand up for gay and trans people in their, in their churches. Um, and so the, it's a different process than I think you would expect from some churches if you are a church member, but um, really interesting, fun, fun to read. She's an actual food writer, but went to seminary for a couple of years and then didn't become a pastor. And so she's a writer and she does a lot of food reviews. So there's a lot of talk about food in it, which is really fun because um, she eats a lot of different things at different restaurants. Um, but it is the story of how these eight people have to come together to try to come to consensus on who they should call as a, as a minister, lay leader, pastor at the, the church where a gentleman is leaving. He's retiring. And, um, yeah, it was really good. I, it was longer than I expected, but, um, I did listen to it on 1.5 and then I turned it up to 1.75 speed. Um, to get through it because I wanted to get it finished, but I really did, really did like it. So all three were thumbs up for me. Really good books. Okay. I have a little Corey stories. We went to Silver Creek Cabin last Friday, and that is in Buffalo, Minnesota. If you are local, you need to go out there. Um, this started as a little yarn store in a cabin that they moved onto some property. This is west of the Twin Cities, so very rural, small town on a beautiful lake called Buffalo. Um, and she started a little spinning and weaving shop in, had some yarn and some fibers in this little cabin. And then eventually she moved to town and she was underneath the bookstore. So if some of you may be familiar because Main Street is like a split level. You're coming down a big hill to go into where the lake is. And the front of the sh kind of store, the bookstore was on the main level. And then when you drove around back, it was lower and there was a parking lot. And there underneath in the what you'd call the basement or the lower level um, was her yarn store. And then <laughs> she outgrew that space and she moved up a block and is in what I think is maybe like an old pharmacy. Um, big front windows, like tin ceiling, long, narrow building. Um, and it is full of yarn. Full, full, full of yarn. If you're a longtime viewer, I would have talked about it before. But I hadn't been out there since the pre-pandemic. And I got a gift card for Christmas. And so I said to my beginner knitters, hey, I'm going. And I knew that Matt and Renee had never been. And I said, hey, we're going to go out there. We picked this Friday. And then neither Matt, Renee could go. But Bonnie came. So Bonnie drove all the way across the city to go out there with us. And I tried to prepare people for just how full of yarn this shop is. And how she has everything under the sun. 
She has a huge sheep and knitter collection, like figurine collection up front and big windows. And then it is just piled to the ceiling. Under the stairs is all the fingering weight yarn and books. And you could go and put a chair in there and spend all day. It is so full. So I have a little video that I'm going to put in at the end of, you know, what we saw and what it's like in this shop. Um, she is going to try to sell the shop. Um, her husband passed away a couple of years ago. They used to come to Shepherd's Harvest. They bought a lot of closeout yarn and would discount it and bring boxes of it to Shepherd's Harvest. Um, but she's getting, you know, kind of over it. And she said, she told Bonnie, no one could ever buy all this inventory. They'd be better off starting over. She has every color of Cascade 220. She has every color of brown sheep. She has all the weights of yarn, I think, of Malbrigo. Like, it's just, and it's not big box store discount yarn. Like, she's got beautiful yarn. She has blue sky yarns. It It's amazing how much yarn she has in there. And it's so much fun. We could have spent longer. My two friends came in the front door, and I told them there's this whole section of just tchotchkes when you come in the front door notepads with sheep and knitting and water bottles with sheep and knitting and candles and soaps and all this stuff. And 20 minutes later, the, my two friends said, we haven't even gotten in the store. Like we're still standing here looking at all this stuff right here. Um, yeah, she has needle sets. Um, Samantha bought a ball winder. She, yeah, there's so much. She has so much stuff in there. It's really fun really fun shop. It is a trek to get out there. It would have taken us, we left, if I leave Victoria, it takes me at least 45 to 50 minutes. Um, and I'm pretty far west. So if you are in the city, it would, well, might be faster to go out 55. So it probably would be quicker because I think it only took Bonnie like an hour. Um, but yeah, just really fun. Um, that's all I have for you this week. I hope you enjoyed my little talk with Stacy, and we will see you in two weeks. Come in for your hug. Oh, I love you all. Um, yeah, I am, I'm doing really well. I'm feeling really good about my diet plan. Um, yeah, I'll just tell you a bit. I've lost 23 and a half pounds. Uh, my 60 days is tomorrow. And if you would have told me in January that in 60 days I can lose 23 and a half pounds. Um, I wouldn't have believed you. I was really hoping to lose 30. Um, but I've really slowed down in my weight loss. I've had a week of no change and then a two pound drop and then another week of no change. So I think it's just my body adjusting and that's just the way I'm going to lose the weight and not like a half a pound a day kind of a thing. And so it's hard. It's frustrating to step on the scale and be the same or go up a half a pound and then down a half a pound and then down a half a pound, then up a half a pound, you know, for a week or 10 days and then all of a sudden drop and then do that again. So um, I just think it's the way that my body is responding. Um, I will go on maintenance starting on Sunday and you can still lose weight on maintenance. You're just adding back in some more calories so that you're not staying in this low calorie deficit. I do have two other friends that have joined me on this journey and that is lovely. That's really, really nice to have people that you can talk to about it. And uh, yeah, all my jeans fit. I feel so much better. Um, I have other jeans that are smaller and smaller and smaller <laughs> because I've been many weights over the years. Um, I was telling someone yesterday that when I had C. diff, I lost like 65 pounds. I was emaciated. So I have some really little jeans that I had gotten rid of back in the day. Um, so, you know, I'll fit into something. I still have a little bit more to lose. Um, the red light therapy was finished yesterday. I have mixed feelings about whether or not it helped me a lot. Um, do I think it was good? Yes, I lost. I've lost at least five inches off my waist a half inch off of each arm, two to some inches off my thighs. Um, so it did help with, you know, shrinking. I still carry quite a bit of my weight in my lower belly and my rear. Um, but yeah, so I'm feeling really good that I stuck with it. I did the, the whole plan for the whole time. I only had a couple of things that I ate that were off plan um, when I couldn't help it um, any other way. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of uh, stuff to get ready for this photo shoot this afternoon, so I'm just going to say goodbye. I will put in those pictures of 
Silver Creek Cabin here at the end, and we'll see you next time. Oh, you go in. Oh, right here. So it tells you how many wraps you would get around this. All right. So you can um per, per inch. So that would tell you how much yarn to do.